Today in the news, we got the future of GPU power and Intel's underdog. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Before that, let me take a second to thank today's video sponsor, WhoKeys. WhoKeys is where you can buy keys like this one for Windows 10 Pro. Get yourself a license with that link down in the description and click buy now and enter the code BTS25 for 25% off. And then you just submit your order. And once you're through with your payment and you receive your key, go to your computer, click on the Windows button, type in activate and update or change your product key. It's that simple. Let's get started with GPUs. The latest generation of both AMD and Nvidia GPUs did not disappoint in terms of performance. They did in terms of availability, pricing, and of course, you know, issues due to the shortages and miners. But performance wise, it was great. We got amazing leaps from both, and AMD is finally competing in the higher end market. And the architectures, I mean, they changed radically. But one other thing also took a pretty big leap, and that's power consumption. AMD AMD's top card is now at 300 watts and Nvidia's at 350 watts. That's bone stock. If we look at specific manufacturers too, you've got someone like EVGA who has an unlocked BIOS that allows the card to go up to 450 watts. And it does so and sucks that much power without any problems. It doesn't stop there though. The rumored RTX 3090 Ti that would launch in January next year would also have a stock TDP of 450 watts. At this point, to exceed that, we're gonna need four 8-pin connectors on a single GPU. That's ridiculous, but how much higher could we go? Well, higher. Igor Walosek from Igor's Lab recently managed to get some schematics on the next generation of power connectors. In the last video, we talked about PCIe Gen 5 and how there was a new standard for a connector related to power. And this is it. From PCIe SIG, it's the 12VH PWRH+. This is a 12 plus 4 pin connector that would come in for all new GPUs in 2022. As you can see here, there's 12 pins at the top that are slightly smaller than those found in current six and eight pin power connectors. These are all for power and ground, and there are four additional pins under there for signaling. According to Igor, this single cable would be enough to power that 450 watt RTX 3090 Ti, and there would be room for more. With 9.5 amps per 12 volt pins, we're looking at up to 684 watts, although the official spec states 600 watts total. Now, going back to that 3090 Ti, if it does have this connector, I wouldn't be surprised if someone like EVGA had an unlocked BIOS that would allow it to suck up to 600 watts. And with rumors saying that the next generation of GPUs are going to be around 450 watts, yeah, that's stock, that new connector will somewhat be needed. Now, this leaves something interesting on the table. What about those four pin signal cables? I mean, I'm guessing that newer power supplies made for 2022 will ship with this standard, but what about our current PSUs? Well, we don't have any leaks right now about this information, but there's a chance that just like with the uh, RTX 3070, 3080, and 3090 Founders Edition, you would find an adapter in your GPU box that would take three or four eight pin power cables and merge them into one of these connectors. These four pins could simply be sense cables, who knows? But we don't have any confirmation on this. So what do you guys think? Are we going to have an insane rat's nest behind the case to adapt to this cable type? Or is it a do over for the next generation of power supplies? Let me know what you think down below. Next up, we got Intel in the news. So in the past couple of weeks, we got benchmarks for the i9-12900K. And last week, we got some for the i7-12700K. The 12900K is an absolute beast, beating AMD's current best of the best. And the 12700K is great at single core performance, but it got outmatched when compared to AMD's 12 core and multi-threaded workloads. Well, now we got a look at the i5-12400, what I would call a budget CPU. It got benchmarked in Cinebench R20, and I gotta say, it's gonna be a really good CPU in my opinion. 
Now, this CPU is six cores and 12 threads, so no small cores here. And if we go ahead and pit it against its six core counterpart from AMD, that's the 5600X, well, yeah, it's not a huge difference. The single core is great. It scores 659 points compared to the 610 points on the 5600X. That's an 8% increase in performance. And in multi-core, it's about 7% faster. And well, that's it. Now, why would I say that it's a really good CPU? Well, AMD's CPU is almost a year old and they're bound to release something better, but I'm going off value here. The 400 series of Intel CPUs have been sub $250 for what seems like a decade now. And Intel's suggested pricing for that series has been 182 US dollars consistently for more than five generations. AMD, on the other hand, has been increasing their prices pretty dramatically with the latest 5600X being 300 bucks. So if I can get a 12400 for anything under 250, it would be a way better deal. Plus there's the F variant without the graphics that usually touches pretty deep discounts. So in terms of value, Intel would win. What do you guys think? Let me know down below. Anyways, guys, that is pretty much it for the catch up. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment if you wanna talk about today's stories. As usual, you can click on the clickety things here uh, when they appear to do the things that they do, like the latest video and the subscribe button. But as usual, stay frosty and I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care. So there's this cup of water that's been there since uh, last Friday, I think. It's aged three days, very smooth. It doesn't look like a, it has a very nice robe. Let me just, mm, that dusty taste is something.